truth functions. A very important fact about SL connectives, a point that you have to understand and remember, is that they are truth functions. So all of our connective symbols, the V, the tilde, the ampersand, and the others we'll see later, all represent truth functions. But what is a truth function? Well, to start with, it is a kind of function. Okay, sure, but what is a function? Well, you've heard about functions many times at school, and most likely, when you think about functions, you think about relations between numbers. However, the notion of function is much broader than that. A function is a kind of relation between two sets of objects. Notice that these objects can be numbers, but in fact, they could be anything. Trees, planets, people, anything. So you can see a function as a way of pairing the members of one set with the members of another set. We're going to call the first set A and the second B. An arrow between a member of A and another given member of B means that the first is being paired with the second. So this pairing we're seeing here is a function. And why is it a function? Because to every member of A, there corresponds at most one member of B. So if you think of A as the input and B as the output, you can see that every input leads to only one output in this case. So we can say that a function is a pairing from one set A to another set B, so that to each member of A, there corresponds at most one member of B. This second pairing also fits our definition, and so it counts as a function as well. Again, to every member of A, there corresponds only one member of B. You can think of the members of A as inputs to the function, and the function as, so, as a sort of machine, and the members of B as the outputs of this machine. So in this case, it just so happens that there are two inputs that lead to the same output. But that is okay, that's permitted by the definition. The only thing that is forbidden is one input leading to two or more outputs. And that is what happens in this other pairing. You can see that B is paired with both uh, two and three. And that doesn't fit our definition. Thus, it doesn't count as a function. So, what characterizes a function is that, knowing the input, you can unambiguously know the output, because every input takes you to at most one output. If it were the case that the input sometimes takes you to one output and sometimes to another, then it wouldn't be a function. Visually, if you represent the assignments of inputs to outputs with arrows, you can see that a function allows for converging lines, but it does not allow for diverging lines. If we use people as our universe of objects, we can see that some relations among people count as functions. For instance, the relation y is the biological mother of x, where x and y are people, is a function, since to every person, that is the input, there corresponds at most one output, their biological mother. However, other relations among people are not functional, such as the relation y is x's friend. It is not a function because many people have more than one friend. So, to repeat, a function is a pairing from one set A to another set B, so that to each member of A, there corresponds at most one member of B. Now, let's go back to our topic. We said that we could define functions on practically anything, and this includes truth values, the T's and F's we are already familiar with. So, a truth function is a function defined over the truth values of sentences. A truth function is a way of pairing truth values with truth values. You give it a truth value as input, and it gives you a truth value as output. Sentence conjunction, represented by the ampersand, is a very clear example. Remember that conjunctions are sentences of the form x ampersand y. What this operator does is that it takes as input pairs of truth values, that is, the truth values for each of the conjuncts, and then it outputs a single truth value, namely the truth value for the conjunction as a whole. As we know from the truth table, there are four possible combinations of truth values. It may be that both x and y are true. It may be that x is true and y is false. It may be that x is false and y is true. And finally, it may be that both x and y are false. To each of these combinations, the ampersand assigns one in only one truth value. So when x and y are both true, then x ampersand y as a whole is true. For each of the other cases, x ampersand y gets the false symbol. 
You can see that this is a function, since every input gets paired with exactly one output, and not more. This means that the output is uniquely determined by the input. The same applies to the disjunction symbol, as defined by the truth table. The combination false-false is mapped to the truth value false, and all the other combinations are assigned to the true. Disjunction and conjunction are what we call binary functions, because they take two inputs. But our SL system also has a unary truth function, that is, a function that takes only one truth value as input. This function is, of course, as you already guessed it, negation, represented by the tilde. It takes you from T to F, and vice versa, from F to T. So it is a function that inverts the truth value of the sentence you are working with. One nice feature of having connectives that are truth functional is that they allow you to unambiguously determine the truth value of a compound sentence from the truth values of its components. That is, once you know the truth values of the atomic sentences that are part of the compound sentence, and you know the truth tables of the connectives in the sentence, then you can automatically determine the truth value of the whole compound sentence, regardless of how long the sentence is. So, we say that a compound sentence is truth functional if its truth value can be figured out solely on the basis of the truth values of its atomic sentences and the truth tables of the connectives. Furthermore, a connective is truth functional if it produces only compound sentences that are truth functional. We saw above that the ampersand, v, and tilde are all truth functions since they uniquely map truth values of atomic sentences to values. We can use truth tables to see how the truth value of the compound sentence depends on the truth assignments of its components in a way that is determined by the connective. Let's give a concrete example of how to do that. Take this sentence. Assume that P is Peter will go to the show and M is Mary will go to the show. Then our sentence says it's not the case that both Peter and Mary will go to the show or Peter and Mary won't both go to the show. The first step is to build our truth table. We have two atomic sentences, so we have four rows. And we have one row for P and another one for M. In another video, we'll learn and practice a step-by-step -step procedure for building truth tables. But for now, just follow along. The main connective here is the negation, which applies to the whole sentence. So we'll leave that for last. The first operation for building the sentence is conjoining P and M by means of the ampersand. So we add another column in which we display the pattern we are already familiar with. The ampersand assigns T when both conjuncts have T's and F's in all the other cases. Now we add the last column, which corresponds to the negation of the conjunction we just built. So we get tilde P ampersand M. If you remember, what the tilde does is that it inverts the truth value of the sentence it applies to. So, since in the first case we had T, now in this column we have F. And given that in all the other cases we had F's, now we have T's in their place. So, now let's focus on the relationship between the first and two columns and the last column. The last column corresponds to the final compound sentence, and the first two to the atomic sentences that occur in it, P and M. So we can see that when both P and M are true, our final sentence, tilde P ampersand M, gets assigned to the truth value false. Whereas in all the other cases in which either P or M are false, it comes out as false. And this is what we mean when we say that this sentence is a truth functional compound sentence. Because simply by knowing the truth values of the component sentences, we can know the truth values of the whole. For instance, if we find ourselves in a situation in which P is true and M is false, we immediately know that not P and M is true. Whereas if we are in a situation in which both P and M are true, we can be sure that not P and M will come out false. And so on for all four possible situations. And why is this compound sentence truth functional? Well, because it is built out of truth functional connectives. With truth functional connectives, for every combination of truth values of the component sentences, there is only one possible truth value for the resulting complex. A connective is truth functional just in case it forms sentences with the following characteristic, namely that the value of the complex sentence depends exclusively on the truth value of the components. 
Another way of getting clear on the notion of truth functional connectives is by comparing them with connectives that are not truth functional. We saw that the English connectives AND and OR can be represented in our system as truth functional connectives, at least in some of their most common uses. However, there are English connectives that cannot be seen as truth functional. One example is BECAUSE. Suppose we have the sentence Al plays because Beth works. Even if we know that Al plays is true, and also that Beth works is true, just on the basis of that information, we can't determine whether the sentence Al plays because Beth works is also true. It might be that Al plays and Beth works, and that Al plays because Beth works, since, say, Beth is the source of income in their household, and that gives Al plenty of free time to play. Or it may be that Al plays and Beth works, while at the same time it's false that Al plays because Beth works, since those two are completely independent facts, completely unrelated. So in some cases the combination T, T is paired with the truth value T. And in other cases it is paired with the truth value F. So this is not a function. The output is not completely determined by the input. So in the case of because the truth value of the whole doesn't depend exclusively on the values of the components. There are additional considerations to be taken into account. Therefore, because is not a truth functional connective. Other examples of non-truth functional connectives are a while, or believes that, or many others, right? One assignment for you is to come up with examples of non-truth functional connectives in English, or in any other languages that you know. However, in SL, we are only going to deal with truth functional connectives. This is an early indication that SL, as an artificial language, is nowhere near as expressive as English. But an advantage of this simplicity is that we know exactly how SL works. It is a system that is always transparent to us, and this is something that can't be said about our everyday English use. Finally, I wanted to remind you again about the importance of parentheses. Parentheses are used to eliminate ambiguity. I'm sure you're familiar with their use in arithmetic. So here expression A and expression B, well, they have the same numbers and operators. The only difference is in the placement of the parentheses. But that makes a lot of difference. It affects the order in which you apply the operators, so that the first one involves multiplying 5 times 6, and the second one adding 20 to 2. And these are very different things. Something similar happens with sentential logic. Thus, instances of the form x, v, and then parentheses y ampersand z are not necessarily equivalent to those of x, v, y in parentheses ampersand z. And if you want to see why this is the case, just assign true to x and false to y. In this case, the sentences come out with different truth values. Okay, this is all for today. Bye.